Now, in summary, just as we illustrated uh, verbally in the previous slides, the next couple of slides simply illustrate again the significance of these funny named nuclei and their functional specificity and their location. Spinal nucleus of 5 is going to have some clinical relevance because, yes, it's associated with the trigeminal nerve in responding to pain and temperature, but as we indicated text-wise, it extends down from the point of entry of the trigeminal nerve all the way down through the lateral part of the pons and the lateral part of the medulla, where it might be subject to a lesion in a lateral vascular syndrome involving either um, a lateral medulla or the lateral pons, respectively. And then, here's the solitary nucleus. As we said, it's a visceral sensory nucleus, mainly. It's responding to the taste modalities carried to it by cranial nerves 7 and 9. And it's also responding to changes in cardiorespiratory and also gastrointestinal sensations. Uh, those sensations are carried to it by cranial nerves 9 and 10. Then on the next page, again, we make the distinction between the nucleus ambiguous and the dorsal motor nucleus of 10. They, are, they both contain motor neurons, the difference being the nucleus ambiguous contains lower motor neurons that innervate skeletal muscle, associated with 9 and mainly 10, whereas the dorsal motor nucleus of 10 is a nucleus that contains preganglionic parasympathetic neurons that are associated with cranial nerve 10 and are serving basically terminal ganglia and participating in the innervation of smooth muscle and glands in the thorax and most of the abdomen. And then hypoglossal nucleus, certainly as straightforward as any of them, exclusively associated with the hypoglossal nerve and again containing all of the lower motor neurons associated with that cranial nerve. Then the accessory nucleus certainly is not a brainstem structure, but it is a nucleus along with the nerve fibers that's found, as we show here, in the cervical portion of the spinal cord. And the axons of the accessory nerve leave from cervical cord, basically pass up through the foramen magnum, and then re-exit the skull by passing out through the uh, jugular foramen. And as we point out here, even though it is a cranial nerve, it is not a brainstem cranial nerve, it's associated anatomically with cervical spinal cord and is not going to be affected, certainly, in any brainstem lesion. And then, again, straightforward nuclei. We talked about the significance on the next slide of the abducens nucleus. We know it's situated at the same level of the brainstem, lower pons, as the facial motor nucleus. But the point we added when we looked at the, at the slide of this was that the abducens nucleus is encircled by the fibers forming the internal genu of the facial nerve. So the fibers of the facial nerve do not exit directly from the brain stem ventrolaterally. Instead, they sweep up and around the abducens nucleus before passing out to exit the brain stem at the pontomedullary junction. And then made this point earlier as well, the superior olivary nucleus, also a lower pond structure. It's the first site where binaural or sound localization is being processed because it's the location of the first neurons in the central auditory system that are being innervated bilaterally by both cochlear nuclei. And then we made the point as well that the rostral pond or the caudal pons and particularly the rostral medulla are going to be the homes of the cochlear nuclei and the vestibular nuclei, which are basically uh, found right at the point of entry of the facial nerve, of the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve fibers that are entering at the level of the pontomedullary junction. 